चैप्टर थ्री वाई डू वी नीड अ पार्लियामेंट वी इन इंडिया प्राइड आवर सेल्स ऑन बींग अ डेमोक्रेसी हेयर वी विल ट्राई एंड अंडरस्टैंड द रिलेशन बिटवीन द आइडियाज ऑफ पार्टिसिपेशन इन डिसीजन मेकिंग एंड द नीड फॉर ऑल डेमोक्रेटिक गवर्नमेंट्स टू हैव द कंसेंट ऑफ देयर सिटीजन्स इट इज दीज एलिमेंट्स दैट टूगेदर मेक अस अ डेमोक्रेसी एंड दिस इज बेस्ड एक्सप्रेस इन द इंस्टीट्यूशन ऑफ द पार्लियामेंट In this chapter we will try to see how the parliament enables citizens of India to participate in decision making and control the government thus making it the most important symbol of Indian democracy and a key feature of the constitution why should people decide India as we know became independent on 15th August 1947 preceding this was a long and difficult struggle in which many sections of society participated people from various backgrounds joined the struggle and they were inspired by the ideas of freedom equality and participation in decision making under colonial rule the people had lived in fear of the british government and did not agree with many of the decisions that they took but they faced grave danger if they tried to criticize these decisions the freedom movement changed the situation the nationalists began to openly criticize the british government and make demands as far back as 1885 the indian national congress demanded that there be elected members in the legislature with a right to discuss the budget and ask questions the government of india act 1909 allowed for some elected representations while these early legislatures under the british government were in response to the growing demands of the nationalists they did not allow for all elders to vote nor could people participate in decision making as you read in chapter 1 the experience of colonial rule as well as the participation of different people in the struggle for freedom left little doubt in the minds of nationalists that all persons in independent india would be able to participate in making decisions with the coming of independence we were going to be citizens of a free country this did not mean that the government could do what it felt like it meant that the government had to be sensitive to people's need and demands the dreams and aspirations of the freedom struggle were met concrete in the constitution of independent india that laid down the principle of universal adult franchise that is that all adult citizens of the country have the right to vote people and their representatives the take off point for a democracy is the idea of consent that is the desire approval and participation of people it is the decision of people that creates a democratic government and decides about its functioning the basic idea in this kind of democracy is that the individual or the citizen in the most important person that in principle the government as well as other public institution need to have the trust of these citizens how does the individual give approval to government one way of doing so as you read is through election people would elect their representatives to the parliament then one group from among these elected representatives from the government the parliament which is made up of all representatives together controls and guides the government in this sense people through their chosen representatives from the government and also control it the ever idea of representation has been an important theme in your class 6 and 7th social and political life textbook you are familiar with how representatives are chosen at different levels of government let us recall these ideas for doing the following exercise the role of the parliament created after 1947 the indian parliament is an expression of the faith that the people of india have in principles of democracy these are participation by people in the decision making process and government by consent the parliament is our system has immense power between because it is the representative of the people elections to the parliament are held in a similar manner as they are for the state legislature the lok sabha is usually elected once every 5 year the country is divided into numerous constituencies as shown in the map on page 41 each of these constituencies elects one person to the parliament the candidates who contest elections usually belong to different political parties once elected these candidates become members of parliament or mps these mps together make up the parliament once election to the parliament have taken place the parliament needs to perform the following functions to select the national government parliament of india consists of the president the rajya sabha and the lok sabha 
after the lok sabha elections a list is prepared showing how many mps belong to each political party for a political party to form the government they must have a majority of elected mps since there are 543 elected plus 2 anglo indian nominated members in lok sabha to have a majority a party should have at least half of the number that is 272 members or more the opposition in parliament is formed by all the political parties that are not part of the majority party or coalition formed the largest amongst these parties is called the opposition party one of the most important function of the lok sabha is to select the executive the executive as you read in chapter 1 is a group of persons who work together to implement the laws made by the parliament this executive is often what we have in mind when we use the term government the prime minister of india is the leader of the ruling party in the lok sabha from the mps who belong to her party the prime minister selects ministers to work with her to implement decisions these ministers then take charge of different areas of government functioning like health education finance etc often time in the recent past it has been difficult for a single political party to get the majority that is required to form the government they then join together with different political parties who are interested in similar concerns to form what is known as a coalition government the rajya sabha functions primarily as the representative of the state of india in the parliament the rajya sabha can also initiate legislation and a bill is required to pass through the rajya sabha in order to become a law it therefore has an important role of reviewing and altering if alteration are needed the law initiated by the lok sabha the members of the rajya sabha are elected by the elected members of the legislative assemblies of various state there are 233 elected members plus 12 members nominated by the president b to control guide and inform the government the parliament while in session begins with a question hour the question hour is an important mechanism through which mps can elicit information about the working of the government this is a very important way through which the parliament controls the executive by asking questions the government is alerted to its shortcomings and also comes to know the opinion of the people through their representatives in the parliament that is the mps asking questions of the government is a crucial task for every mp the opposition party play a critical role in the healthy functioning of a democracy they highlight drawbacks in the various policies and programs of the government and mobilize popular support for their own policies the government gets valuable feedback and is kept on its toes by the questions asked by the mps in addition in all matters dealing with finances the parliament's approval is crucial for the government this is one of the several days in which the parliament controls guides and inform the government the mps are representative of the people have a central role in controlling guiding and informing parliament and this is a key aspect of the functioning of the indian democracy c law making law making is a significant function of parliament we shall read about this in the next chapter who are the people in the parliament parliament now has more and more people from different backgrounds for example there are more rural members as also members from many regional parties groups and people that were till now unrepresented and beginning is to get elected to parliament there has also been an increase in political participation from the dalits and backward classes let us look at the following table that shows the percentage of the population who voted in lok sabha elections in different years it has been observed that representative democracy cannot produce a perfect reflection of society this is realization that when interests and experiences separate us it is important to ensure that communities that have been historically marginalized are given adequate representation with this in mind some seats are reserved in parliament for scs and sts this has been done so that the mps elected from their constituencies will be familiar with and can represent the dalit and adivasis interest in parliament similarly it has more recently been suggested that there should be reservation of seats for women this issue is still being debated 60 years ago only 4% of mps were women and today it is just above 11% this is a small share when you consider the fact that half the population are women 
it is issue of the kind that forced the country to ask certain difficulties and often unresolved questions about whether our democratic system is representative enough the fact that we can ask these questions and are working towards answers is a reflection of the strength and the faith that people in india have in a democratic form of government